Hey guys, Ethan here. Today I wanted to do a quick video talking about the Portage Temp FS and how to set one up, what it's for, and what benefits there are to using one. So the first thing I want to cover is exactly what a Temp FS is and how it can be applied to Portage. So here we have just a quick Gen2 wiki page talking about Temp FS and I'll pull it up near the top so you can kind of see the description. It's a, uh, it uses the Linux RAM FS and it's basically just something that you can mount anywhere on the disk. So for example, you could mount a chunk of your hard drive anywhere to like any directory and then of course it's writing to your RAM as if it was a file system. So the installation is actually really simple. It's, it's just one kernel driver option so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to cover that because I've done it in all my videos. I usually go through and like show you where the option is, but considering it's a Gen2 wiki, I'll link it and I'll just say file systems, pseudo file systems, tempfs virtual memories. It's pretty simple. It should actually already be enabled by default, but just give it a quick check if you're not sure. And then you can see the usage here, which is pretty simple. It's just mount dash T, which is type tempfs, tempfs, then the mount point. Systemd has a few other options, but of course I'm using OpenRC, in which case I don't really know much about it. And this is the default suggestion of how you want to set one up, assuming that you want to do slash TMP, slash temp, right? So, how can we use this for portage? Well, if we take a look first, and I type in the lsblk command, you'll see that nothing is really mounted, and even blk id, like, I don't have my RAM mounted anywhere that you can see. So then what does this mean? Because I have a temp of S here and I'll actually I'll full screen this and make it slightly smaller so the line doesn't wrap just so it doesn't get confusing. So if you go in your FS tab and you put down a line that says temp FS and you set the directory to slash var slash TMP slash portage, this is the directory where portage compiles your software. So if you're compiling something like um like bash for example just for example it's going to make a directory slash var tmp portage and then like whatever the package atom is so it could be like www client and then the next directory is firefox and then inside of there is the actual program or it might be firefox dash version but that's where the actual compiling is happening so you're mounting the entire over the entire directory structure starting from the portage area so every compile that happens is going to be here and when the compile is over it's removed and then we're setting the type of it to tmpfs which is tempfs and size is really important to take a look at so i have another wiki page pulled up right here this is the portage tempfs wiki page which i'll also show so an example is it will check if you have enough space in this directory for the compile that you're doing. So for example, it'll show here that you can take up to 13 gigabytes in this directory if you're compiling something like Firefox with certain flags. So it's really important that you have a lot of space in this directory. And on top of that, while it does do pre-merge checks, like it will check, do you, is, the, is the directory more than X amount of size? you might have simultaneous compiles going on. So if you have a dash J value and like a dash L value and you have like some, si uh, if you have them simultaneously compiling in your make.conf, you might be in a situation where you might be using 13 gigabytes on Firefox and then Rust jumps in and uses another 10 and now you're using 23 gigabytes and your compile may fail. So that's something that may occur. So it's something to look out for. And another thing is when you're using a temp fs, it's writing to your RAM. So in the case that for some reason your computer has to be restarted during a compile, everything in that directory is gone. And what it's saying down here is Ccache may be used to assist during recompiles because while everything in that file directory where you were compiling is gone, the objects may still be cached and help you get back to speed. So here is the example for how you might make a tempfs and you'll see right here four gigabytes which is a really really small amount of ram when it comes down to compiling but it may work for you there's also a, a couple more things up here like per package so if you want to take a look at this i might recommend it if you don't have a lot of space for your tempfs it might not be worth 
putting down just a static size. But back to what I have it set to, the user ID should be Portage and the GID should be Portage since this whole directory is owned by Portage. If the mount isn't set there too, it'll have some permission errors. Mode is 755, no A time, and 00. Since you're not looking for checks on this file system, it's temporarily mounted and removed. So now that we've talked about what it is and how you use it, let's talk about what the benefits of using one is. So as you know, or as you should know, compiling has to do with a lot of writing, a lot of moving files around since files are created, moved, used. It's just assets becoming one to create your binaries. So that's a lot of writing on your hard drive or SSD. So if you have a hard drive or SSD that can't be replaced, you're really wearing down its lifespan because it, they're typically not meant for writing of that magnitude, especially if you're doing like an entire system full of compiles like Gentoo, you're compiling all the time all your software. Your drives are probably not going to last as long and it's going to be kind of slow considering that you're moving files, you need to move files a lot, like many files. So here's where tempfs comes in. Your RAM is meant to be writing often and it writes extremely quick. So by compiling inside of your memory, you're reducing the lifespan drain that would be on your hard drives and your SSDs while also having probably the fastest solution. So I'm going to go ahead now and start a compile just to show you. I'm going to try to compile Firefox real quick, which it's going to take it's going to take a little bit to compile. I'm not going to compile the whole thing, but I do want to show that it's being used. So if I type lsblk now, or it should be blkid, uh, where is it? There's a way to see it. Let me actually pull it up. I'm going to cut the video and I'll come back when I remember how to do it. All right, here we are. I you remembered real quick. So df-h, which is a command that you can see all the file systems and how much memory is being used. You can see there are already tempfs that exist on the system, like for example, in run. And another one is run user. But here you can see my portage one, which is at 24 gigabytes. It's currently using 2.3 gigabytes of that, and it's in var tmp port. You see about 10% full. So, it, so far there's 2.3 gigabytes. If I run this command again, now there's 2.7. The compile is going on in here. Now, if I cancel this, and we'll see uh, slash var slash tmp portage, this is where the Firefox compile is actually going on. If we df h now, you'll see that the files are in here. But we can actually unmount these. So one way is if we just let the uh, the compile fully finish, this will basically be emptied and you'll have your memory back to be used. You can actually see right now only 5% of my memory is being used, even though it said before that obviously more of that would be used during a compile. So if we remove everything inside of WW client, and we check df-h, we can see that the directory is empty, therefore our memory is no longer being used. So on top of that, we see that 5% of memory is being used currently. This is empty. It was using 12% of the tempfs before. So what I'm basically just trying to get at here is your memory isn't permanently allocated to this directory. It's only being taken during the compile. So it's not something that you have to worry about too much as long as you can make sure that you have the memory for the compiles that may be happening simultaneously it's kind of just a set it and forget it situation i've never really had a problem using tempfs on some occasions compiling something like firefox for the first time rust might jump in while you're compiling something like firefox like at the same time and it can get kind of an issue or something like gcc and rust or llvm just anything like that those big ones you may have a problem and there's also a solution for that which is this no temp fs which is the per package choice if you set an environmental uh, thing in portage so if you've never done this before i'll show it off real quick because it's also important to use this so if you go to etc portage env and then you do no tmp fs dot conf this can be called whatever you want but in this case i'm going to call it the default and you make a portage tmp dir and you can say in this, I should actually clarify real quick before I keep going. When you do 
when you make a compile, the default variable for this is var tmp portage. When you're doing this environment, you're basically saying overwrite that value for this package so it's actually var tmp in a new file or a new directory. In which case, you'll then make the directory, give it the proper permissions, and then chmod it. Afterwards, you can set that variable in etc portage package.env. And this is how you do it for basically anything like that, overriding variables with portage. So what this is doing is basically creating a new directory to compile in that isn't your tempfs. So if your tempfs is var tmp portage, it'll compile that piece of software that you don't want on tempfs somewhere else. So it'll still be compiling on your disk. So that's how you would do that. And I'll just, I'll finish showing it off. I might as well. So in this case, we'll just copy paste what they put here, and then we'll create the file structure, which is var tmp node tmpfs, right? And then we're going to ch own it, and I'm just going to copy paste it because I'm lazy. And ch mod it. And then finally, we can add a package to it. So now let's really quickly do Firefox again. So we're going to also copy paste this. So in this case, we're going to the package.env directory, or it's not a directory, it's a file. And you can see, for example, I have a ccache.conf, which is actually should be no ccache, it just turns ccache off. So if we do, where did Firefox go actually? I'll do it myself. Client, Firefox, and then we're gonna do no tmpfs.conf. We're specifying the file in this case. And now if I try to emerge Firefox, and we're going to wait for it to start the compile real quick. Let's see. There, tempfs is not being used, and we're going to keep refreshing. Tempfs is not being used, but now if we head to var tmp no tempfs, there it is. We have no tempfs and inside, portage, ww client, everything is here. So that's just a quick illustration of how how per package basis tempfs works so i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i hope you thought it was informational if you liked it leave it a like if you want to see more of my content consider subscribing join my discord link in the description if you want to say hi or if you want to be part of the community or ask questions and with that being said i'll see you guys next time have a good one Bye bye